Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think we should do a yearly um, yearly catch up. Yeah. It's so it's so weird. We're here. We are. It's been a year. Yeah, it has been a year. Ha- we are recording. Yeah, I figured. Okay. I remember the last time. <laughs> I was I was your little guinea pig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your the audio of the first one is really bad. I don't know if you listened to it. Yeah, yeah, I listened to it. Yeah, it was like echoey, and it was sure. just so. I'm I'm glad that we're doing this again mm-hmm. to show uh, your growth as an audio technician. Yeah, you know, uh, more than anything. It's yeah, all about the audio. Yeah. Um, oh my god, man, how is your? It feels like we first got here, we were around each other a fair amount in the beginning. Yeah, and then life happened uh-huh. and we both did whatever we did for a year yeah i like, would love to we can do you want to trade swap stories for the year have how's your year yeah been? i want to hear about your year first um it has been this has been one of the most crazy transformative years of my life i am exhausted and emotionally exhausted and i feel like i've as a very recent hit kind of a transition period like i no longer live in that old apartment with uh my ex mm-hmm. now yeah like i mean you see it now you're you're here obviously no woman lives here no <laughs> not a woman no, a woman not. would not be caught well i mean dead would probably be the only way they would be caught here absolutely <laughs> i mean how else could they survive without their their their, their skin products and uh and bath bombs mm. um i'm actually pretty happy with this place it's nice yeah it's a nice little bachelor pad yeah but yeah, yeah. Um, a year, I, I came here and I just went full force. Like I came here and I fucking did stand up literally the night I got here, which was unnecessary. Yeah. It was really stupid. <laughs> like in retrospect, I should have hung out at home. I should have taken a second to so just get your feet like yeah. settled and stuff. Yeah. I should have taken in, um, the city more. I should have spent time with with uh hannah who was at the time my girlfriend regardless i should have like i even though it didn't work out you were like yeah i kind of neglected that person yeah yeah the very first night we've just driven across country for 48 hours straight and then i'm like all right bye i know we don't have furniture or a bed beds or anything and i just left right so um i went full force and i i had this almost angry competitiveness about me mm. um and i just i hit open mics and i grinded and i grinded and then something happens near nearing the end of winter um it was like around the time you and i like i think disconnected like as winter started yeah yeah like i just kind of because i stopped going to open mics as much um but yeah like that was around the time that i think you and i were like I would say drifting apart, but we were just Doing not not things. together. Right. We're not around each other as much. Um, so around, that was around winter. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, around that time. If I remember winter correctly, I just ran myself ragged, mm. um, and it was good. I needed to do it. I needed to get that out of me. Right. But it was not the smartest decision. And then ragged in what way? Like just comedy wise, or like uh, like working a lot. At your um, job and also doing a lot of comedy or I think I needed to make all of these mistakes I needed to make yeah. like I've been saying this a lot recently especially on this podcast but that now that I'm removed from my environment that was fucking me up so bad I think I don't know if I talked much about where I'm from and how bad it was yeah yeah about like California and home for you and yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah yeah just wasn't a healthy place for and sure. Now that now that I'm a year removed, I I basically got to see all of the problems that were the environment and and out of my control mm. uh, that I'm trying to give grace to myself for, and then all of the problems that were just me. Mm-hmm. And through this whole year, I've seen myself fall into all of these pitfalls I fell into back home, but now I'm in this new place. There's nobody else to blame. There's nobody else's. It's nobody else's fault but my own for making those decisions. That can be freeing, though. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, after after the pain and suffering of it. Sure. <laughs> but yes, freeing is is a good way to describe it. And um, I just feel like I finally hit some maturity. Hmm. Um, yeah, like I, I, I don't know, man. I look I look at the world and myself completely different now. So a lot's happened. Wow. Yeah. 
What about you, man? You do shrooms or something one day? I did. And you're like, oh, there, there. There's, it yeah. So <laughs> around near it, March, I want to say, could have been around March. I did a small trip, mm. and then, uh, and what I realized from that was, okay, I needed to just let go a bit, mm-hmm. and then I had a bigger trip um, after that. Uh, maybe late March, March or April, mm-hmm. where uh, have you done mushrooms? Oh. No, I have not. Oh man, oh, oh man, you should. Yeah, I, <laughs> not not your thing. I don't know. Like I, I rarely even feel the inclination to like smoke weed. Yeah, like it's very much I have to be in a, a kind of confluence of several different mood types, and they all have to line up pretty well for me to be like, you know what, that's something I'll partake in today. Uh, yeah. So like even like like. The idea of shrooms and just how planned out it seems like it has to be. I'm like, I can't project what kind of a state of mind I'm going to be in a a week or two in advance. What the fuck? Like, how am I going to coordinate with a guy or somebody I know to go out somewhere and do that? Nah, probably not. (laughs) Understandable. Set and setting. That's what they say. If you ever change Mm. your mind, I'm happy to be the guy. For sure. No, if I ever felt like I wanted to, (laughs) like... There wouldn't be a number I would call faster. Oh, I'll take those. <laughs> I'd be like, Aaron. Aaron knows what's he's, up. He's the guy. Yeah, he, he'll be a good Sherpa. Um, I I like that Sherpa. Yeah. Um, I learned during that trip, the bigger trip. I learned that I have a goal, and it's okay to have a goal, but I can't like put blinders on and fixate on it. Right. So like I now it's like okay, I know my goal is to be a, a working stand-up comic. Now it's a matter of, okay, let's let the universe, it's not going to be a straight line. Just let the universe take you along and let you right. learn things uh, along the way. And that's kind of how you get there um, in a way that, that may, so that you're ready when you are there. Sure. Um, that, that kind of balance and making sure you're the person that you need to be, yeah. like the, the foundation is strong enough to support that additional, you know, additional floors that you're putting on top of that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've talked a lot. Yeah, no, I like. I'm, hey, <laughs> you're, you're the guy with the podcast, baby. That's what I, I, it's just, <laughs> I like listening to you just as much as other people do. Well, um, it's just, it's just so strange. It's when we first got here, I remember being like, okay, it's important that I've met for some reason because we were both around the same. It was like a week apart. Yeah, it was like within the same week we moved here. Yeah, and I, you just seemed, especially relative to me, like a very grounding presence. Mm. Um, Still, in a lot of ways, I still seem more erratic than you are. You look at you and your calmness, but see, you are like, I think that we both view each other the same way, but like for different uh, uh, reasons or elements. So, like, you are like, hmm. I don't know how you view me or like, but I, I'll say like, you are far more like uh, calm and you are more, far more introspective. Like, I think about myself a lot, and I think about like how I'm. Uh, you know, the things I'm doing right and things I'm doing wrong. But um, you seem a lot more like comfortable in your own skin. And I know we've talked before and you're like, I am not. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's that's one of those things about you that like uh, you like being around you makes me feel like I'm not a fucking alien. I don't know. I don't, like we talked about this whenever we first met where I was like, yeah, dude, like getting to Chicago and starting to hit mics and stuff. I just felt like an imposter for, for a while. I was just like, I'm not meant to be here. I'm occupying someone else's space and time in this, you know, in this area. And you know, it's not for me and everyone can fucking tell, like they all know that I'm just like an alien, (laughs) you know? And, uh, and like, meeting you and like hanging out and just talking to somebody that's kind of in the same spot. Like I was like, Oh, okay. I'm a normal person. And so is this person. That's cool. So like, that's kind of like where I find that you're a very grounding presence in that way. You know, maybe feel comfortable. I think I can see that. Um, sure. I, I think at the time I was not, not comfortable in my, I think, I think I was, um, cocky. Mm. Like I was way cockier than I thought I was. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think I knew. I think just on the skill of stand up comedy, for the little bit of time I was there, I knew, like, okay, relative to these open mics, I think I'm better than most of these comics in terms of skill. Mm-hmm. So that gave me a sense of cockiness. Mm-hmm. And then I, because of how fast I was trying to move, I ended up in this kind of pond with people that were bigger and stronger and better. Mm. And then I saw them in their level of comfort with themselves. And I was like, oh, okay. 
I am better than whatever's going on over here, but I am nowhere near whatever's going on over here. Yeah. So I think over time I've kind of let go. So I let go of the competition aspect. Yeah. Of like things. how good am I compared to others versus how good am I compared to myself yesterday? Right. right. That, that's a beautiful way to put it. And th- <laughs> I'm a wordsmith, baby. Yes. And <laughs> that's all we do this through doing that. I think I, it's ironic cause I would still inherently be comparing, but sure. Through doing that, through letting go of the competition aspect of things and just kind of letting it be and and respecting everyone's process and their own artistic abilities, mm. I am closer to what I was trying to get to. Um, but your grounding presence kind of came with your lifestyle. Mm. Your, I mean... It's fair to say your lifestyle is kind of the opposite. <laughs> There's no yeah. drugs to my knowledge. And yeah. No, no, non, non, non prescribed. Right. Not <laughs> <laughs> regular, regular back drugs and, and doctor prescribed drugs. ADHD medication. There that's, you go. That's about it. Yeah. I take legal speed. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, your, your wife, you have a, 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 your seed who is a son who I fucked up somehow. <laughs> your I, seed who is a son. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe I said daughter. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But um, this is for the for those of you listening. Yeah. He came to a, a, a an improv show of mine, and he was like, "How's your daughter?" And I went, "Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah." You yeah, mean yeah. my son? He went, "Yes, your seed, your son." Yes. <laughs> so we got to talk about that too. But mm. um, um, you're just your lifestyle is, and I think I even talked about it on the podcast that that you know that jealousy I I had about your relationship. Mm. I think I've been digging into why I felt that way Mm. and it's I don't know I haven't fully figured I definitely haven't fully figured it out but that to me is the grounding like watching somebody who is stable like Mm. what the (laughs) you heard that right yeah no uh, (laughs) you're not imagining anything okay yeah somebody just screamed outside I don't know if you can hear it on the mics city city living yeah that was weird Um, you're next to a high school right yeah. Or middle school. So yeah, like high school. crazy kids yeah. just being stupid probably. Be wild. Yeah. Um, but your your lifestyle is just so calm and grounding and, and or calm from my perspective. I'm sure it's hectic. Sure. Can only imagine having yeah. a seed. Yeah. Um, but just it's it's traditional might not even be the right word. Just like non chaotic in the way mine is. Sure. I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's like the stability that you would like in your life or uh, hope for someday maybe. Yeah, I think so. I, th- I think I'm getting to that place. Yeah. And I don't think I was in that place when I first met you. I think for I sure. was wild as fuck. <laughs> um, but I did. I went to your improv. You've been doing improv more than stand up. Yes, a lot more. Okay. Please, um, um, regale me of your years. Sir. So I, uh, I will give you the news. I haven't actually like officially announced this in any capacity. Uh, but, you know, I just kind of mentioned it a couple of times to some people like uh, I have uh, quit stand up comedy. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Ten years in, dude. I, I celebrated my 10th anniversary of uh, being a stand up comic, I think, uh, like less than a week ago. And wow. yeah, um, it's just one of those things like I don't think I ever was really like in love with the the process. And people talk about like you got to love the process. You know, and I, I was very much in love with like the result. I, I, you know, I very much enjoy making people laugh and I, um, I enjoy getting to be myself and be genuine and just like talk to people and make them laugh. Um, but the actual process of, of, uh, you know, grinding for open mics and stuff like that, I just, you know, it's something that, uh, drains me and I don't find it as fulfilling as I wish it would be. Um, and just like maintenance level for me is like four or five mics a week. You know, if I just want to stay at a, at a, like a consistent, like decent level, I need to hit four or five mics a week. If I'm trying to get like better, I'm like six or seven. If I'm trying to get really good and like really grind, I'm doing like nine or 10 a week. And that's just too much. Like, and you know, it's a personal thing. Some people need less, some people need more, um, a, a time on stage to, to kind of work on their shit. But, uh, yeah, it's just too much that it needs from me and it, and it kind of dilutes the rest of my, my life and my capacity to, to do the other things that fulfill me. Um, you know, and, and I'm very much similar to you and that like, I'm kind of competitive. Like I have a competitive nature. I had a really competitive dad growing up. So like, for sure. I'm 
Okay, we're, we're, okay I'll keep talking. So yeah, very of a <laughs> competitive dad growing up. Um, so I just like grew up like, oh yeah, you got to be better than the guy across from you in the football field. And so I was like, I got to be better than the guy behind me and in front of me on the lineup. You know what I mean? Um, and I think I, I grew out of that to a, to a degree, but still it feels like, you know, I know I'm fucking really good at this. Um, I'm just not like around enough for people to be like, that guy's a guy and let's get him on a show. You know what I mean? Um, I'm also not a great hang. Like objectively, I don't like, Hey, I've got responsibilities outside of comedy. So like I would hit a mic and you know, there were times where I'd get to stay around and hang out, but you know, more often than not, it's like, all right, I got to go, you know, relieve the nanny or I have to wake up with my son in the morning. So I got to go home and go to sleep kind of stuff. Uh, and also, like I said, I don't smoke pot, which is a big, uh, big, part of big it. benefit. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not that I look down on anything like that or object. It's just, you know, I, I'm not a guy that's like, Hey, let's hang out and smoke a joint after this. You know what I mean? Uh, which I feel like it's just a huge part of like networking and oh, the, you know, the social aspect is a part of it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a process that I think my lifestyle now really like is is very incompatible with i never i never really think that i like really enjoyed the process of grinding and hitting mics and stuff um it was always a challenge i always just enjoyed like the big stuff i enjoyed like actually getting to do shows for paid crowds like whenever i started working for uh, a comedy club in dallas it was like holy shit this is the fucking thing i want to do um but then whenever that slowed down or stopped and i had to go back to open mics i was like i hate this because it's it's just not at all what i'm capable of um, and so I, yeah, I just, I just, you know, another part of it's like, I, I like to be a resource and I like to be a teammate. I like to be, um, you know, collaborative and stand up, you know, even at its best and most collaborative is still a, 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 an individual sport. It is tennis without a partner. You are out there on your own. If like, and and obviously failing alone sucks, but even succeeding alone isn't great. Like I look at like the best outcome of like, if I'm living the dream is me like on the road most weekends and I have a killer fucking set in front of a huge sold out crowd. And then I go back to my hotel room and pat myself on the back and, you know, Mm -hmm. call my kid and say goodnight. Like that doesn't sound like something I'm really into. You know, I think it's, it's far more fun for me to like, you know, get on a stage with some people improvising and, and come out of it going, wow, that sucked, but at least we did it together. Or, Hey, like you fucking killed it. Or like, Hey, I got to set my friend up for like a really killer joke. And like, they're getting to fucking, you know, ride that high right now. And I was a part of that. And that's great. You know what I mean? It's just a lot more uh, personally fulfilling. Did you have a moment when you were like, okay, I'm done. Uh, it was a kind of a gradual thing. I, it's, it's been a conversation or kind of a, a talking point for at least like three years, like a, co- like a couple of months, probably six months prior to COVID happening. It was like starting to feel like maybe this isn't for me. Um, but uh, no, I mean like I was just hitting mics and stuff and I just kind of started to like, you know, realize like I'm, or no, actually there was a moment and it was the last time I saw you like organically out it was at um, my buddies. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that was a big moment where I started feeling like I really don't know if this is something I like want to keep doing. Um, because like I went up and I did my set and felt all right about it, but it was just kind of like whatever. Like the only reason I was there uh, actually was because uh, – I saw that uh, Vic Pondio was the was a judge, and he was the guy who was like, you know, he'd booked me a couple of times in the comedy clubhouse, and I was still trying to really get through to him, like, hey, I'm doing a really good job here, I'm I'm having really good shows, like, book me for like a normal spot or something, uh, and not just like the two guest spots that I had done, um, and so I was like, yeah, like I wasn't gonna go, but then I saw that he was a judge, and like a friend of mine was gonna go, and I was like, fine, and then like during my set, Vic left the room to go bring a date in and missed my set and i was like well fuck me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah vic yeah you know, i know he's a he was a guest on your podcast uh previously he's a great guy uh but i was just kind of like god damn it vic well, no, come on no, man I'm a personal, I get <laughs> yeah it, I get yeah it. um and then like i obviously didn't move on in that competition which part of me was like how could i have if only two of the judges were actually watching me right you know um and also i you know like a really uh, a good friend of mine from uh uh, improv is the person who runs that mic, Lexi Costantini. Um, and like, 
I didn't move on. Some somebody or two people that I thought like shouldn't have moved on, like moved on. I and like feeling. it was one of those things where it's like, yes, this is a comedy competition. I there you are justified a little bit more in that situation for feeling competitive because it was inherently a contest. Um, but I remember just being like really kind of like not like angry, but just like internally fuming for mm-hmm. like the whole car ride home where I was like, what the fuck was that? You know, like, come on, dude. Like getting robbed almost. Right. It's not that I feel like I'm owed anything or, you know, I, 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 I'm entitled to any kind of, uh, you know, award or like anything. Because honestly, the set wasn't the best of my sets. Right. It was still fairly good. Um, and there was people, like I said, there were people that, that moved on that day that I was like, fuck yeah, like Ryer Cameraman uh, moved, on, moved on. And I was like, holy shit, like she fucking killed it. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely had a way better set than I did that day. Um, so that was, you know, I just was kind of like on the way home from that. I was like, I really don't like this feeling at all. Um, and it was, you know, partially just because I was like, yeah, fuck comedy contests. These things are stupid. You know, like I, I, I just kind of ab- object to comedy contests in general. Um, but also like there was a big part of it that was actually like, stand up. And so I, uh, I think when was it? It was, it was a couple of weeks ago. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out and, and hit a mic. And I went to Will's on a Sunday and had just like a really awkward set. It was a great crowd and like the people were having a great time. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, and I just kind of left feeling like this isn't me anymore. Mm-hmm. And like talked to my wife that night and was just kind of like, you know, this feels like something that just doesn't like fulfill me anymore. And I feel like there are other things that really uh, kind of tap that, you know, that part of me that I, that, that I really, you know, enjoy. And I need to like kind of let go of this because it's one of those things that like being a comic, it's so kind of instant gratification where like you can go out and hit a mic and make people laugh or not. And it's right there. It's right in your face. And that outcome is just instantaneous where, you know, everything else that I want to do, you know, except for improv is a lot more delayed. You know, I'm a right, I, I do screenwriting and stuff like that. So that's like a fucking super removed process. Like maybe there will be 50 people that read this before the movie gets made. And then the movie's going to be completely different from the script that I write. People are going to love the movie. They're never going to read my script, you know? So that's like one of those things where like, I love doing it, but also it's super removed. So you don't get that gratification right away like you do with uh, with stand-up, you know? So you're able to get your gratification from a mixture of film, screenwriting, and improv. Right, like that kind of, you know, because part of like the improv process that's not in, as instant as stand-up is because it is a team thing and you got to coordinate with other people. And if, if your team can't get together on a given night or there's not as many improv like open mics, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not just up to you randomly at a whim. Oh, I could just fucking walk up, like walk out of my door and go find a mic right now, you know, right. um, where you can't really do that with improv. Um, but yeah, man, I, um, like I said, we talked, uh, my wife and I talked and just kind of were like, yeah, what, uh, what things feel fulfilling to do, what actually like, you know, gets you going and gets you passionate and what things are you holding on to that like. You really shouldn't like. You don't need to be holding on to that anymore. You know, because it just felt like something I was supposed to do. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I need to stay busy, and like if I'm not out doing mics, like or if I feel like oh I'm doing something, I'm doing nothing today, then I'm like well I need to go hit a mic. You know what I mean? Or if I'm not at a mic, I'm like I feel like I'm lazy piece of shit right now. Oh, I know that game. Yeah. 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 So um. Before we get back into mm-hmm. to stand up in the arts and and, and everything. <laughs> it's time for this week's sponsor, oh, Manscaped. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, they feel like they're sponsoring everybody. Yeah, it's fine. I actually wrote a uh, like. There's a, a sketch that I that I had an idea for. It's like a Bang Energy ad, and it's like Bang Energy will sponsor everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's yeah, yeah. But uh, before we get back into it, it's it's my raw insecurities. So just know I'm self aware. But uh, so I saw I saw your improv show with your friends. You did seem very comfortable. Mm. Um, I haven't seen you do stand up. I haven't been able to like sit down and watch both. But I could say very confidently that you felt very comfortable up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you seemed very happy doing what you were doing, which I'm happy for. Uh, I that whole time afterwards, I was like, man, his wife hates me. Why? I you know because of insecure. I I don't. I was so afraid of your wife hating me. Wow. Yeah, that was it. I assume she doesn't. 
No, she doesn't. She thought you were really nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You're a nice guy, Aaron. <laughs> I, that's, I don't. Why would she hate you? I'm like curious what the thought would be like, um, what reason she would have for hating you. Because cause I'm like really, I can get really obnoxious and I can be too much for certain types of people. Like, I think I can come off, I can accidentally offend people when I'm not trying to, or uh, I'll, I'll just say, I feel like I'll say the wrong thing. Sure. Yeah. And so I, the reason I know like, okay, that's insecurity because I remember that whole night and I never did anything that was like no. crazy. No. It's, <laughs> you're just in the back of your head, like worrying about doing something crazy or being yeah. obnoxious that you and felt it was obnoxious. Like your night with your fucking improv people, and you all clearly knew each other. So I wanted to make sure that I what I know how big my personality is, even relative to other theater people. Mm. And I didn't want uh, to uh, fuck that up at all. So I'm, I hope that did not happen. No, absolutely not. That's like. True. Yeah, uh, you know, I was happy to see you. Like that's why I invited you. I was like, "Hey, man, come to my show because I want to see you. I uh, want want you to see what I've been up to." Um, so yeah, no, like my wife, my wife thought you were great, and okay. like she was like, "Yeah, he's really nice. He's really like you know, like really considerate." And he's like, "You were just kind of like, hey, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to keep you from your friends and stuff." Yeah, I'm like, yeah. "You're my fucking friend, dude. Like, <laughs> like you're you're not some like colleague of mine that's just occupying space in my." my life that you shouldn't be that's, once again imposter syndrome yeah yeah that's what sure it is. And yeah i also i'm i don't want to say people's names so i will write a thing down i'm writing it on paper please don't say their name cool okay you know yeah i f- fucked up mm. i'm not gonna get into the details especially because of the podcast Mm. But I, I just found myself doing the same dumb shit from California. Gotcha. And now I am this maturity and this place I've gotten to, because I do feel like I've matured, but this place I've gotten to, unfortunately had to come from the, um, negative repercussions of my actions. And Mm. I really fucking don't like that. Yeah. Uh, isn't it, isn't it messed up? That's how most change happens <laughs> it's fucking it's fucking terrible yeah that, that people have to get hurt or you have to do something damn near irreputable to and, and, and you have to fucking sit there to to grow i i understand that's where growing pains comes from but right it gets dark as fucking here am i wrong yeah no that was it was a very quick light shift just from the natural light coming from his window it happens all the time yeah like a cloud went over and it was like immediate like uh, way darker <laughs> But it's, I think that's the other reason why I'm, I'm a little, I'm trying to be more present about my decisions and how I behave. Yeah. There's other stuff, but I just want to say sure. something. Yeah. But to get back to, to film and improv and stand up, um, old Aaron, mm-hmm. get ready for old Aaron would say, man, don't give up, man. Don't be a bitch, man. Just keep going. Just keep You got to stick with it, man. Gotta keep going, man. It'll get better. Yeah. And then the sure. other part, and then the now Aaron is like, that's his fucking business. And if he's happier, right? Like, that's projecting my own fears. Sure. Like, like I, I took my first, um, I took my first comedy break, even. Even during the pandemic and quarantine, I don't know. Are we in the pandemic anymore? What is what is what is life? Uh, we're in the intermediary stages in between the pandemic and uh, the actual plague. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Rocks. yeah. Right. So yeah. <laughs> um, do you get? We'll get back to film and shit in a second. Yeah. And, and my break. Do you get scared? I'm kind of. Am I? Am I? I feel nervous. I feel like something's gonna happen. Well, yeah. It's it's totally gonna happen. Something. Like, I promise you, it will. Whatever. Like you are totally right for feeling nervous. That's a great gut feeling. Yeah. That uh, absolutely. Yeah. When I saw the um with the Roe v. Wade stuff, mm. and then I saw the the, do you see the guys who are going to start a riot at the uh, Pride Parade? Yeah. When I was, I, and don't get me wrong, they were foiled, Scooby Doo yeah. style. It was goofy but as fuck. Yeah, the, the implications, like, what happens if they weren't? Yeah, and yeah. then the shooting at, um, mm. it, it's. I was at the fucking food, World Food, whatever the fuck, for Chicago. What is it? Um, festival. Festival. I didn't even go in. I just I saw the line. I was like, yeah, fuck this. Yeah. Um, but I was out there, and there's this little piece of me that's like, I hope someone doesn't start shooting. 
And that's a really scary mm. dystopian uh, right. thought to have. Yeah. We live in a we live in a very fucking weird time it's, for humanity as a whole. It's super weird. Yeah. Um anyway. Yeah. That's just a part of like any kind of catch up that's happened in the last three or four years has had to have the caveat of how fucking weird is everything right now? I know, right? There's no way it can get weirder. And then the next year, it's like, oh, it got fucking weirder. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm most, I'm scared for the election. I'm scared of what the fuck's going to happen. But I I think I'm a little bit more hopeful. Yeah. Like, have you seen anything about like how uh, kind of the Murdoch news empire is starting to kind of turn on Trump? And Who's Murdoch? Is that Fox? He owns Fox and the Wall Street Journal. And finally being like, maybe we shouldn't yeah. be gassing this crazy person. Up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was, a, there was a kind of point where like, some hosts started saying some things that they weren't previously allowed to say. And like some op-eds were getting written that would normally not be published in the wall street journal, that kind of thing. So I'm hopeful that that might kind of start to, yeah, I know January 6th was a a big hit for them. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Which is, it was almost a big hit. (laughs) Thumbs up for them. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Um, Oh, wow. I took, took a break. Took a break from stand up. Yeah, how long? That, uh, about a month, month and a half. Maybe. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Like, well, yeah, I, I did it sporadically so I didn't completely lose the ability. Sure. But like, I you wasn't. Dialed it back. Yeah, I dialed it way back. I the lowest I've ever done. And it was, I did. I felt like, especially early on, I felt like a piece of shit. I mm-hmm. felt lazy. I felt, I felt bad that I was enjoying myself. Mm. I, I, there were like points the where I was. I was like, I'm not doing shit, and I'm done with work, and I, I, right now I'm not doing stand-up the way I'm doing. I'm just going to go towards the, uh, what is that, the, the lake part where they paint it green and the, the bridges? I yeah. Don't, the rich people hang out there with their boats. Oh, uh, River North? River or? North, sure. Mm-hmm. I, I went out, to, I just hung out. I looked at the water. I would watch movies. I would just hang out and do whatever, and... I felt for a while there I felt so bad that I was happy <laughs> I felt like this is wrong you need to you need to be uh, miserable and grind for your pre, for your shit mm-hmm. and part of the break was on my own and part of the break to me is the universe telling me to sit down because uh, work was destroying me it was near the end of the school year I was about to be unemployed so I couldn't take days off mm. um, I was moving here uh fucking hannah was leaving it was this big transition period and i just needed to stop for a second and that's great that you had that like awareness yeah 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 well that oh that's the kind of with the mushroom trip by the way i learned something from it okay i i i big trip yes the big trip yep i learned that i am building my own family out here Mm -hmm. and i am and like like that that you're I appreciate my family, my blood or whatever. And yeah. I call my grandma and all that stuff. But like I'm building people that I can call like if I need help I know I can call you and, right. and get help or or if there's other people. Like I'm building that foundation out here of people and I I'm deciding who's in my life. Right. And through doing that I feel like I'm picking people who who have my best interest at heart mm-hmm. and that I feel this warmth and safety I've just never really felt before so I also learned that um, and that's really great thank you like that feeling of like peace yeah. is something that's uh, I think understated like in life or in uh, in general amongst especially men yeah. like that was something that I kind of like had a realization uh you know, a couple of months ago where I was like, Oh yeah. Like I didn't really feel like peace until like I was out of home and like living with my, my wife and like never really felt like peace until that, you know? So peace is quiet. It's quiet. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm fucking way softer and squishier too. Like I'm way more emotional for whatever reason. Um, you little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stop being such a fucking <laughs> pussy, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. Gotta, gotta man up. Gotta hold it down. <laughs> you gonna fucking express yourself, you pussy? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> no, no, and and the, with the, the, to get to this, the, the open mic shit, I feel that 100%. When mm. I came back, when I came back from my little hiatus, I felt 
I well, this is how I knew like oh, okay, I still do want to be a stand up comic. I was scared that I was gonna have the feelings that you came to where you're like, do I want this? Yeah. I and you know I took my break and I went back, and I the first week I was like what the fuck, because I was at open mics, and open mics, fucking suck. Yeah. They suck. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's you're waiting for God knows how long to get on stage unless you get up there unless you get there super early and you're still waiting to yeah. then yeah. like you no matter what you're just waiting to do four to five minutes right you and I can I think I can confidently say this for you as well I'm sure you felt like my skill level is above I'm no headliner but I'm above whatever. open mic level yeah for sure yeah, yeah. and and you you. There's this feeling because you know you're in a place where everyone needs validation, right. and that val it's palpable, man. Mm -hmm. Like taking a step away and then coming back, I was like, this is fucking gross. Yeah, what like, is this? Like these people need a lot from this right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, and and I felt like oh, I must have had that same energy prior to my break. I had to have. There's no way mm -hmm. I didn't. And then the other thing I learned was when I tried to talk to people that. I that it was like they could only talk about stand up comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So I had I had a realization like that very early in my career. Like I was I say very early, like five years in probably or four years in. And uh, you know, I started in high school, so like I was, you know, just kinda like really getting into like adult like going out and grinding and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just kinda like, these fucking people need to like figure out other shit like to have a personality around, you know, it just like, I, you know, my thing was always just kind of like, I want to have a genuine conversation with these people. I like riffing and I like being silly and stuff, but there's a level of like, I don't need to hear you run bits at me for an hour and a half. You know what I mean? Like that's, that was always the thing. I was like, I just connect a little bit, you know, please just try to connect, which obviously like I'll wait until this car goes by. <laughs> um, obviously everyone is different and there are people who like, have a hard time connecting with other people, obviously, but that's just something what me personally is hard for me to like engage or be like, Oh yeah, I, I like being around these people whenever they're not like connecting at all. You yeah. know, connection. That's like, yeah. Like I would, I, the, that month or two, whatever, how many months went by and I would talk to people about that. Cause that was what was going on in my life. Cause I was doing things mm. and there, you could just, I could just feel that they didn't have anything to say. Yeah. And, and then I was like, oh man, you, there's a, I got to show you that. Have you ever uh, watched uh, Every Frame of Painting? It's on YouTube. Mm, no. Oh, you would like. Wait, is it a, it's like a video it's analysis. A, yeah, yeah. They do like analysis on film and stuff, right? Uh -huh. I watched the one about uh, Akira Kurosawa and like his use of uh, shapes and like polygrams and triangles and stuff like that in this composition. There's but. one that I think you would enjoy and I think would relate to, and it's about um, the Looney Tunes characters. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got to send it to you because gotcha. I can't show it to you right now like sure. this, obviously. Sure. But at the very... Here it is. This one. Okay. Okay. I'll send it to you later. Yeah. But at the very end, he talks about... Or he talks... The, the narrator talks about... This is, there we go. The narrator talks about how Chuck Jones would get inspired and Chuck Jones was like you know you don't you get art from life mm -hmm. and he's like you go you go out and people watch and read and do a new thing and have experiences, experiences. outside of being a fucking dick joke guy yeah. all the time and yeah. I knew that like I knew my material wasn't dick jokey no no for sure I, it, but it yeah. was it was enveloped within itself it wasn't from other things mm -hmm. and now it feels like you know I'm rebuilding it all I'm, I'm I've been back for almost a month now I would say and I feel like I'm a better comic and I can take from my life experience I'm, I'm doing life now right when I miss a mic I don't want to kill myself it's just like okay I missed a mic it's fine I'm doing other things that will It'll help. Inevitably result in me being a more well-rounded person. Right. And a more well-rounded comedian. Yeah. I guess I thought, like, in order to get to be a successful comedian, I have to be miserable to tap into that. Myself. Yeah. And I don't have to do that. And I think I've hit that place now. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, very much shared that, that, that sentiment for a while. Like, that was something I would always, like, 
talk to people about. It's like fucking do other things. Like for the love of God, have a hobby, do a thing outside of stand up. Yeah. Like I started playing uh, men's league baseball. Nice. Yeah, it was a great time. Like, fun. yeah, like had a, had a fun time. It wasn't like anything I was telling jokes about, but it was just life. Yeah. Just just getting to do something that fulfilled me because I liked it, and not because it was going to give me anything or result in me feeling productive or successful. It was just like, yeah, I like hitting baseballs and throwing, like playing catch for two hours on a Saturday. You know? Yes, I hundred percent know. I'm yeah. going to complain about our country for a second. Yeah. Have I, we not been? I fair. Yeah. It just. <laughs> When I think back, when in retrospect, of how how I was raised, how we were all kind of raised, sure, it's like God damn, we were really raised to be part of a machine like this. You weren't. Why the fuck was there homework? Like when I think of like, <laughs> why were you sending this shit back with me on my free time? Right. Yeah. Or or when I weekend homework, summer shit that they would give you. It's like this is all this supposed to be the time I'm supposed to chill. And I know my family grew up in it for sure because they would make me work when there was no need to be work. It, like, rem- that's what the man expects of us. Dude, I remember. And then the CIA crashes through the windows. <laughs> they crashed through the windows. Yeah, it's hey, like, hey, calm it the fuck down. Yeah, we know all 25 <laughs> listeners will whip up into a revolution. Yeah, you stand-up comedians are uh, getting too powerful. I do <laughs> I do have some, some consistent listeners, which feels kind of cool. That is um, cool. I don't know who the fuck they are. but you know, here That's even better. Yeah. My grandma listens to all my shit. Really? She loves my stuff. Is she going to listen to this? If I post it, yeah, probably. She's nice. She's great. Um, this one's this one's for you, Nana. If you get to this part, comment. Uh, uh, something. Something, yeah. In quotations. Quote, open quote, something, end quote. So I know that you heard. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, continue um, your thing. I, was, I made the CIA joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I remember being a kid and... I remember I had to always make it look like I was doing something. I don't know if right. you have that same. Yeah. Where where if you looked too relaxed, you got in trouble. Right. Yeah. And so it's just made me rethink having the distance from family is one thing. Being alone now for real, for real. Um, you know, this past year of mistakes in life and all, all, of, the, all of everything. Right. Um. It just it makes me reflect on the past in just a completely different lens, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, but film, so you're doing film now. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I, I, sh- I need to watch your sketch. I know you know. haven't yet. I haven't. Yet. It's so very good. I'll probably watch it as soon as you leave. Well, you can watch it while I'm here after we end this. Okay. And I can see your live reaction. Okay. Um, yeah, man. I uh, so I've always I've been a screenwriter for a while. Um, almost as long as I've been a comic. So, you know, here in like a year or two, I'll, I will have been a screenwriter long and longer than I uh, was a comic, but also I was like not nearly as consistent, which also I was an inconsistent comic. I would take long breaks pretty regularly. Um, I say 10 years, I was probably actually doing comedy for seven and a half of those years. Like, but it was cause I, I wasn't taking the shorter breaks whenever you're supposed to, you know, like I would just like wait until things got awful. And then I'd be like, I'd just be like, fuck this for like a couple of months and not like, not want to do it at all. Anyway. Um, but like, you know, screenwriting, I, uh, you know, got into it in high school, uh, like a year after I started doing comedy and, um, ended up, you know, going to college for video tech and like get, you know, getting with some people there that like to write and, uh, took a couple years off and was just doing nothing really. And uh, then I met up with this older guy who was a screenwriter that I met through college um, who had like a production company and made a movie and everything. Um, And kind of like he started like mentoring me and we wrote a movie together over the course of like six or seven months. Um, And then I lost the computer that I had access to screenwriting software on. And it's hard because once you have like professional screenwriting software, like Final Draft, and then it's like, all right, I'm going back to the free screenwriting software online. Like it's just not the same. It's, it's, It's really hard to get back into that. Um, and I was also doing a lot of stand up and stuff and I was just kind of like, yeah, this is like, I was working for the club and I was like, fuck yeah, dude, this is the thing. Uh, you know, so I kind of got out of that, but, uh, you know, recently I started like reading scripts more, um, you know, a comic in the area posted about, he had wrote the script and was looking for people to read it. And I was just kind of like, that sounds like fun. Like there's a, like, it's funny cause I'm not a reader. I don't read a lot. Um, and I, I don't like seek out scripts really to read normally. Um, but like there was a joy that I got from just reading the script, which like, you know, probably never going to get made. I don't know. Um, most movies that are written are never made. Um, 
it's a cool experience just to be like, yeah, even though like it might not end up being a movie at all. Like I got to see that movie. I got to participate and experience that thing. That's very like limited in its scope of like the amount of people that that's going to impact is, is potentially very, very small. And I got to be a part of that. And that's really cool. Um, and just enjoying like seeing this movie that's like very like, uh, unique and just like, that's the, that's its own thing. It's really cool. Um, and so like did that and started reading some of my old scripts and was like, yeah, this is fucking cool. And, uh, kind of in the same vein as we were, as my wife and I were talking about just, uh, you know, me finding or figuring out what thing like actually fulfills me to do. And like the process of it's enjoyable. Um, you know, writing scripts is something that I was like, I really need to get back into that. And it was like an itch that started to come back for a while before I read that one script. And, um, you know, I started just having these ideas for shows that I felt like, you know, wow, that might be really interesting, but just not really kind of getting the ball rolling. And, uh, then we kind of made the decision to like, all right, we're going to like really put our money where our mouth is and say like, all right, you know, set a goal like, uh, and make it attainable, make it measurable and make it actionable that you can actually like make it happen. You know, that you're not like, Oh, I got to wait for something else to happen. Or if this guy likes it, then maybe it'll happen. You got to be able to do it. Um, so it was like, yeah, we're going to make like, I'm going to make 10 sketches by uh, the end of the year, you know? So like we got one in the bank. So it's like two sketch a week, every two, uh, uh, a sketch every two weeks. Um, so like one week of pre-production and like writing and, you know, revisions and stuff like that. Uh, and then produce it, uh, at the beginning of the second week, edit it and then put it out in the middle of the next week, kind of in the middle of pre-production for the next one. So, um, and you made your first one. Yeah. Yeah. I shot the first one, uh, two weeks ago and put it out this past Wednesday. Um, it was very fun. It's a sketch that I like, I originally had it written as like a silly monologue for like a stand up thing, but it's too like out there and weird and it's hard to like, I'm not a character comic, so I can't just be like, Hey, this is the character I'm doing and then do the thing. Um, so I ended up like, uh, reforming it into a sketch and like typing it out and, and, uh, filming it. And I, I feel really good about it. The jokes are really funny. And, uh, you know, I think it's also like well-made it's, it's, it's a well shot, well edited. It doesn't look shitty. It doesn't look like it would be on TikTok where it's like, no, yeah, it's professional. And like, I, that was a big part of it. Uh, you know, the kind of goals and what we want to get out of this process is like, I want to have, I want to kind of like build, some like what we call creative equity where it's like, that is something I can take to the bank. Like I can take 10 professionally made sketches to the bank and say, there are the things that I fucking made and they're consistently professional and, and quality. You know what I mean? Uh, that way at the end of this, like that is something that somebody can put money behind or somebody can like use that as, yeah, this guy deserves a fucking job, right? Like this guy deserves a, uh, you know, a shot at like a writer's agent and like trying to work towards maybe being a writer on a television show or, um, potentially, you know, making a sketch series and like having that funded, you know, I've got, uh, some connections in the production world that might pay off if that's the case. Um, you know, but ultimately it's, it's something that I can take to the bank and I can like say I made that. And even just now, like, uh, looking back at that sketch that I made and like, you know, obviously my audience is really small right now, but, like people really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed it. Like I watch it and I, I, it tickles me and I think it's funny. Um, and I can look at that three minutes of fucking video and I can go, I fucking did that. You know what I mean? Like that is, that is, Tangible. yes, that is an, a result mm. that I can, I can look at and say, I did that. And that's really nice. That's awesome, man. That sounds very fulfilling. Mm. Would you, so you would love to be like a director, like a sketch director of some kind being able to live off of directing and writing? Yeah, you know, I, I I'd say like filmmaking in general. Um, I am a writer first, actor second, director third, and then like producer has to kind of happen within all that. Um, yeah, like I I very much enjoy the process of like making stuff and like thinking about the visuals and thinking about the lighting and and stuff like that more on set, you know, as well as like all right, like how does this character feel about this moment? Even though it's silly, it's like, Oh yeah, this director on a porn set is making a dick joke. Big deal. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, this guy thinks he's a hot shit. Like he, he thinks he's making like a really emboldened, like impassioned speech to his actors and there. He's going to get the, the best performance out of them possible, you know? Uh, and so like just digging into that kind of shit, it's really exciting and, and fun and, uh, uniquely like human. If, 
If you ever if you ever have auditions, let me know because I want to audition for something for it, please. See, I'm not auditioning for anything, but like I'm I'm okay. I've got something that for you that I think you'd you'd like. Yeah, I'll do it. Um, I'll tell you I'll tell you after we're done. Um, okay. Is it like a secret? Do you want to not? No, yeah, I I don't I don't like it's not a secret, but also like, you know, I'll hopefully put it out here in a couple of months. I've got the next uh, like month planned out, so it might be a um, what month is next month? September. Uh, July September. Yeah, so like it might be a, like a mid to late September thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you. Um, oh, I'm excited! You have a cheeky fucking smile. No, yeah, it's a funny sketch. And I think you, I think you'd enjoy it. Um, anyway, but yeah, like it's uh, it's it's a very fun process, and like it's storytelling, which I love doing, and it's not tethered by like uh, who I am personally. That's part of stand up that really bugged me. Was just like I'm not free to step outside of who I actually am. Hmm. Like you're, you're a brand on stage yeah. no matter what, like you are a brand on stage. And if your brand isn't, I'm a character comic, you know, and I'm just going to go out there and play people that are not me at all. Right. Um, then there is an expectation of this is who this person is going to be. Or if you start one way, you're going to finish the, uh, the same way, or you're going to be kind of consistently that thing. Um, and if you deviate from that, then it becomes like just an issue of is this audience like getting what they paid for or what they're actually here to see or is the rest of my set suffering because I started off in a way that isn't genuine to me. Right. Um, so it just felt very much like, all right, well, you know, I can't talk about that thing or I can't, you know, I can't get away with that type of a joke just because it's not my, my style or my, my natural rhythm. You know what I mean? Um, stuff like that. So where in, in, in like, film or writing it's like no no you're free to make shit however you want to and tell the stories that you want to tell and it doesn't matter like if like like right now uh, i'm writing a a thing about a medieval siege it takes place during a medieval times and i'm like yeah i didn't fucking live then i'm not i'm not one of those people you know what i mean but i get to i get to put myself in that position and and see what it's like you know it's exciting it's, it's funny i um i never would have worded what you just worded as the strength i always I guess I looked at it as the reverse. I looked at stand up as like, oh, you just get to be you. Mm -hmm. And nothing else, you don't need to put any, you don't need to change into a character. And I looked at that as the strength, but the way you described it and what your goals are and what made you kind of stray away from stand up, I can see why that would be a detriment. I can see mm -hmm. why, like, you're almost trapped in you right. on stage. Right. And it seems like filmmaking and improv gets gives you uh, in, in writing gives you a, a chance to step outside of yourself yeah. and play outside of there right um i love other people you know yeah. I'm, I'm a big time extrovert like my tank is filled by interaction with others um like as a as a in high school i remember i used to really want to go uh, hitchhiking Jeez. that was that, okay. that was a that was like a strong desire that i like really wanted to do because i just love the idea of meeting complete strangers and getting to kind of like get to know just completely random people that I would never have any reason to know. Otherwise that was the thing that, that was a real part of it that really drew me to it. Um, I never ended up doing it cause I'm a fucking coward. Uh, <laughs> I think you're yeah. Uh, some people would say that. What year, sure. Were you considering doing this? This was probably 2013, 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We had a smartphone then. Sure. But not like the way it is now. Right? Sure. It was pretty much how it is now. Just without the like, um, Crazy. finger fingerprints. Right. 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 You know, Base no, I can't believe people did that in the seventies. I, I sincerely sure. can't imagine that. But. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a big part of like, like just a core thing of me that I love like getting to know people and getting to understand people and, um, that process. Like I understand myself pretty well. And like that, that was, that was part of where like I enjoyed stand up at a time whenever I was really growing a lot and really getting to know myself a lot. And stand up was a part of that where I could like, explore it and really like wh who am I on stage right mm -hmm. um, but once it kind of was like okay well I kind of know who I am now a lot more than I used to now I want to know other people more and like or, you know I want to dig into like why is this person this way you know like or or what could could have like make this person tick you know those are just things that like I said naturally are not really possible in stand up have you ever thought about making a documentary I've made a documentary it's funny. I literally uh, commented on this guy's uh, post today. So I made a documentary in college for a project. Um, cause I was just like, I don't know. just thought it sounded fun. Yeah. Um, 
I, uh, it was a buddy of mine. His name was, uh, at the time it was Joe, Joe coffee. Um, but now it's, uh, no, it was a stage name. Now he's Joey Johnson, which is his real name. You can look him up. He's a great guy. Um, and so I did a, I did a documentary on him for school. And, uh, today he was like, he, he had posted a thing like asking other comics to write a bio for him. And like, cause he was like, yeah, I need a bio for my like media packet or whatever. And I don't like thinking about myself cause it's cringy as fuck. And so like there's a bunch of people like, you know, just messing around and giving them just random shit or like taking like an actual famous comics bio and just crossing their name out. You know, it's just, it's really funny stuff. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, you should, uh, you know, uh, I was like, post that a uh, documentary about her. Uh, I think it was like, you guys should just, uh, like post my personal information now, like that kind of thing. Or I don't yeah. know. And I mentioned that documentary, but yeah, I did a documentary on a buddy of mine. Um, and like, cause he was a very like prominent person in like the small, you know, suburb of Dallas is like comedy scene. That was like really huge. Like mm. it was like a very strange ecosystem. That's really cool. Like, and it was a thing that I kind of was a part of at the beginning of it, but then got out of it and did like a long break and then got kind of back into it right at the end of it or right as that kind of started like really affecting Dallas as a whole. But like in, at the time, like all these comics are starting out there and doing shows together in this small town. And like by like the year or two later, like of the comics that were working in Dallas, like half of them were from Denton and like they probably made up Denton comics, make up like 10 or like, 10 or 15% of the actual overall like thing. So it was just like the people there are fucking were really funny. And like, there was something that was going on there that was really unique to that specific, like small little micro scene. Yeah. And I think like, you know, if Joe coffee ever hears this, he, he was a big part of it. And so I, I remember like going and being like, Hey, I want to make a documentary about you. And like, just kind of follow you like through the mics that you produce and like some shows that you do and stuff. And he ended up like winning an award like for Denton Arts and Music that was like best comic of the year, yeah. which was like a fun little like you know nugget at the end of it where it's like that's a good end. It's a good button. Yeah, it's a great button for the end of a documentary. You know, a little triumph. Um, yeah, so I have made a documentary. And that was a lot of fun. And like I did get to know this like my friend. Hey, we were pretty close friends for a while yeah. uh, before I got out of stand up previously, and then you know getting back into that, I was like, man, like Joey Johnson's fucking cool. He's a good guy. Nice. So that was fun. Well. I'm going to call this a button as well to the, the story because it's been roughly an hour. Roughly an hour. Um, I don't know if you see my creepy pictures here. I do. I figured that that was going to be for us. Is, yeah, that's I was going to do one. Happen. We didn't um, do one the first time. We didn't do one the first Man, we, I didn't get to have a, like... Yeah, it was a, a guinea pig. You were for real I was a, a guinea, guinea pig. pig. And yeah. I, think, I think there's a rhythm to this now. Sure, yeah. yeah. You're getting into like a... Um, you know, people know what to expect whenever they listen. And yeah, there's an aesthetic. Yeah, now and, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fun. All right, let's I take like that it. picture. All right.